Hi, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another smart figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the plate tectonic situation that results in divergent boundaries and what sorts of geologic phenomena result at those boundaries. Let's start our discussion by traveling to the valley of Thingvellir in Iceland. This is a, a pretty epic looking landscape. But you'll notice that there are big blocks of rock here that seem to be related to one another, and yet there's this big valley and the blocks of rock are separated. What's going on here? Well, the answer, as usual, goes back to plate tectonics. You'll recall that the outermost rocky layer of the Earth, the lithosphere, is broken into a series of plates, and these plates move around with respect to one another. The boundaries between the plates thus can be sites where the plates are moving apart from one another, we call these divergent boundaries, where they're moving towards one another, convergent boundaries, or where they're simply sliding past one another, and these are called transform plate boundaries. We want to focus today on divergent plate boundaries, and essentially this is the situation where two plates are moving apart from one another. Now I want to walk you through a sequence of images here that show the breakup of continental lithosphere and the production of new oceanic lithosphere in the gap between the separating continents. So this process begins with stretching of the crust where you end up getting doming upwards of the crust. Notice uh, overall here this uh, image is sort of bowed upwards in the middle. And then there are faults and these faults basically are uh, normal faults where you have a block of crust sliding down the face of another block of crust. You'll also notice here that there's some magma being produced at depth. This is due to decompression melting of the underlying mantle. And that magma will find its way up along fractures, including the faults we just talked about, to potentially erupt at the surface as volcanoes. Now, when this process really gets going, you get a nice pronounced landscape feature called a rift valley. Notice how there are these blocky scarps on the sides of this rift valley where chunks of rock have broken off from their neighbors, slid down that face, and then dropped into the valley. You can also imagine a lot of sediment filling in this valley. Well, if this thing opens up wide enough, it can actually admit ocean water. And then you end up basically getting a small linear sea where the two chunks of continental crust have totally separated. A new oceanic crust is being formed in the gap in between them. Okay, so seafloor spreading has initiated here, and now we've got a proper ocean basin, even though it's young. Over time, continued seafloor spreading at this oceanic ridge will result in a wider and wider ocean basin that'll look something like this. Over time, the two continents get further apart. They used to be just next to one another, then they got further apart still and further apart still, and they'll continue to move further and further apart until something happens to close the ocean basin. So if you're to look uh, for modern examples of these different stages of divergence, East Africa is probably a, uh, the best example of the first stage where we've got rifting of continental lithosphere. The Red Sea region between Africa and Arabia is a nice example of the initiation of seafloor spreading. And then the Atlantic Ocean is sort of the classic example with a mid-ocean ridge that's located exactly halfway across the ocean basin. Now, when you look at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, you'll notice that it's actually not one nice smooth piece of ridge. It's actually broken into a series of segments. So rifting occurs at some of these segments, all right, where two plates are moving apart, in this case, uh, the African plate and the South American plate. And then in between those segments of rifting, you end up having these transform faults, something we'll talk about in another smart figure. So Iceland is a nice example where you can trace the Mid-Atlantic Ridge up above sea level. Iceland has a rift valley running through the middle of the island, and that valley, Thingvellir, we looked at earlier, is located within that rift valley. So that's the site of this photograph we just looked at. Um, what you've got going on here essentially is stretching of the crust. So on one side, the North American plate pulling off towards the west. On the other side, the Eurasian plate pulling off towards the east. And then these big blocks of crust break off from their neighbors and slide down into the valley. Let's consider a North American example for a quick review. This is the Baja Peninsula of Mexico, uh, just south of San Diego in California. The Gulf of California separates Baja from mainland Mexico. 
Let's go ahead and remove the labels here. This is an example where we have a divergent plate boundary. Imagine sketching in the divergent plate boundary here, and it would look something like this, where the little red segments are sites of seafloor spreading, little ridges, and the white segments are transform plate boundaries. What sort of arrows would you draw in this picture to show the relative motion of Baja compared to mainland Mexico? If you drew arrows on that look something like that, then you did a great job. Yeah, there's right lateral motion here. If you were standing on Baja, it would look like mainland Mexico is moving off towards your right over geologic time. Thanks very much for your attention. This has been another smart figure.